Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? I have finished the first small field and we are going straight into the second little field that we've got here. And then we'll be going up the road to do our last field before we decide whether or not we really want to go and buy another field of corn to really stuff our silage clamp full. Um, the question that I asked you all last week was, did you want me to just stick with the round baler that we've got, the Deutzfar very master round baler that we currently you um got on higher or did you want me to buy the small um well the the very old massey ferguson um square baler it's a, it, it is a big square baler but it's a very old version of it so it's quite sort of small and i would imagine that the bales wouldn't have been anywhere near as compact or um sturdy as the bales you get from modern balers i also imagine it's probably a bit slower although I don't actually know what the speed of the machine is going to be yet so um, that's sort of still to find out but I had 2,380 people answer that question and of the 2,380 people 363 want me to stick with the round baler and 2,017 would like me to go with the Massey Ferguson square baler. A few of the people who voted for the round baler did actually say they were voting for that one because they don't want to see the Massey Ferguson square baler being used because a lot of other people have been using it all over the place. Um, and it's something that's become quite frequent in Let's Plays. I'd imagine it's because the size of the bale um, is the same as all the others, but the price of the actual machine is considerably less than any of the other ones, um, which is kind of... A valid point I feel that is that is a very, a very good reason for not wanting to see it yet again um, however I'm thinking that we use it well we, we obviously we're going to be buying it now um, we'll only use it this once we'll use it here on this map and then we won't use it again I, I do I feel that argument quite strongly it's kind of it kind of feels almost cheaty because um, we just sort of stop here driving long second and we'll have a look here uh, baling technology. Now, if you have a look, most of the balers, um, the the big balers, are like a hundred thousand euros. They're all around the hundred thousand mark, um, except for this pack here, the four pack. They're eighty thousand. Um, I mean, that's still pretty high as well. You've got to use the four pack if you want um, a trailer on the back. These have got hitches on the back, so we might end up having to use those if we want to do something different. Um, come through here this one is only twenty four thousand, which is why everybody's using it because it's a quarter of the price of every, all the other balers um if we want to use this one we need to use one of the um pack big bay the pack four big balers um and i would like to use that one at some point but i'm not sure where we're going to use it yet but anyway um this is the baler we're getting this time this is going to be the only series i think that we will use it because like people have pointed out it does kind of feel like it's cheating because of the really low price compared to all the other balers um so yeah we'll, we'll just do that one the, the one time rather than um it being a a regular feature i think i think that would be best it sort of it'll achieve a decent balance you were going to turn then you were going to make the turn properly it was going to be fine and then you had to stop and back up and <laughs> miss the crop altogether as you went around the corner i really don't understand the logic behind the hired help some days it's it's like it's like it's drinking decaf coffee that's that's all i can say it's it's it some days you look at the hired help at what it's doing and you're thinking yeah you're back on the decaf again, aren't you? Just, just have some real coffee. Focus yourself a little bit, and then we can, we can, we can start over. Um, but I don't think that's going to happen today. Um, right. Uh, I'm going to just finish filling up this trailer here because I'd like to do most of the harvest um, today. I'd like to get most of the rest of the silage harvest done. Um, but I think that we will expand it. We will do a little bit more tomorrow because there's um, something else I wanted to show you as well. And doing a silage harvest is quite big. But my weekly question this week is, we were talking last week about doing hay and um, doing silage bales. Um, now we don't have very much hay. We've just about used up all the hay that we made last time round. So we're not going to get a ver we're not going to get a massive amount of hay this time round either from our grass fields. What we need is we need to go and plough them up in the winter and then reseed them with grass. Um, actually, we'll probably plough them in the autumn. We'll get another cut off of them and then we will plough them up. Um, and after we've gotten that next cut off of them, 
um, you know, so that we get something out of them. Then if we go and plough them up, hopefully the grass will at least grow a stage before winter so that um, it's, it's ready for next year and we've got more and we can fertilise it then. So we'll be able to drastically increase the yield that we get from it. Um, so the quest, what we were talking about was buying in hay, um, whether or not we should do that. So I'm putting that as the weekly question this week. We're going to have to buy some hay, whatever we do. If we go and make, if we turn all of the grass fields that we've got and we do um, another harvest of hay, bale it all up, we're still going to end up having to buy in more hay before the winter is finished. Um, so we'll, let, we'll sort of produce about half of our own and then we'll buy in half. The other option we could do is we could make a load of silage bales. Now silage in the winter sells for a fortune. Silage bales in particular, because I mean silage bales are quite do have quite a bit of um, real world value, especially in the winter, because you can go, you can load them up on a farm and you can drive them off to your farm. So farmers do sell them to each other because they um, it's so easy to move silage around. It's, it's a very valuable thing. So we could take the site, we could take the grass fields and we could turn them all into silage bales, stack them up somewhere out the way and then in the middle of winter sell the silage bales for about four times what we have to pay for a bale of hay and make an absolute fortune out of it. So that is my question. As we've only got five bales here, we've got a, um, we do have a few bales over at the other farm still so that we can bring those back. But do you want me to make, um, do our next cut of grass do you want me to do it as hay and use it ourselves and only buy some or do you want me to do it as silage bales and buy in all of our hay this winter um it, you know so we can potentially make some profit and buy in some hay or we can try to be more self-sufficient and not have to rely on um other farmers providing our goods that we need so there we go. Do you want me to do hay bales for the next cut of grass or do you want me to do silage bales for the next cut of grass? It's your vote. It's your game. Head in the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. Now, if we just come in here, um, there is a very specific reason that I slowed down and I'm keeping the angle over here at the moment because there's something I want to show you in a minute. I had all kinds of suggestions for how we could roll this clamp down. Um, some people said that we should just use this Ford. Some people said, yes, use the Deutz and get a blade or something. And I had some various other suggestions. People wanted me to use um, an excavator like I actually used. Because um, other people have seen that being done as well. They thought it was great. I had three people suggest something that they've said they have... Well, two people said that they have had it personally. Um, and um, sort of been part of it. You've probably just seen it then at the bottom. I was I was hoping to keep that a secret. It was supposed to be secret. It's like um it's like Gandalf when he comes up to uh it was Frodo, wasn't it? He comes up to him and he he, he comes in in the middle of the night. He goes to him, is it secret? Is it safe? And um like that really look of intensity in his eyes. It was fantastic, I loved it. Um yes, I am a big Lord of the Rings fan, so I've watched those films loads of times. And here we have it. A bulldozer. This is what we got. We got for the Lieber PR776. This thing does cost a little bit, um, but I thought it was worth it. It's from Lambo Mods from their website. Lambo Mods, this one here, a lot of people keep asking. It's a, um, they, uh, I think they've put the texture pack onto, no, was it them that put the texture pack? I'm not quite sure, but um, yeah, it's an auto loading trailer. Um, this one here is a bulldozer that was released to the public, but it wasn't working properly. He's taken it, he's fixed it, he's put it into English, and he's released it again. He's put a notice to say that it's not his original mod. He's just taken it, and he wants the original mod creator to contact him so that they can um, discuss what to do. But anyway, that's what he's got. He's got a huge selection of mods on his website. It's absolutely brilliant. So I would strongly suggest going to take, take a look. There will be a link to this one in the description down below. Um, this one is costing us about 25,000 euros to lease. Absolutely brilliant. And yes, it does have a top speed of 332 kilometers an hour. I drove it around for a while um, at top speed. It doesn't build up to the speed. It doesn't get up to that kind of speed. It takes a very long time to build up any kind of speed at all. Um, but look at this. It rolls the clamp absolutely beautifully. C compacting 34%, 37%. It's a very heavy beast. It squashes it down in no time at all. 
Plus, it's got the blade on it as well, so you can shove it along with the bulldozer blade. This thing is incredible. Absolutely incredible. It's got some muscle behind it. It really does. So, yeah, we can roll with a full bulldozer. It's absolutely brilliant. Let me just get off the wall there a minute. Um, it does have, when you look in the options for it, I'm stuck. I'm actually stuck. I've actually got a bulldozer stuck. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> Am I stuck on the wall or what? Uh, I am genuinely stuck. Oh, no, he is moving. He's thinking about it. If I, if <laughs> I honestly didn't think that I would get it stuck. Oh, there we go, there we go. Move over, there we go. Right, so he, yeah. Um, it does if you have a look on the... That's brilliant. Get, get it stuck, that's awesome. If you have a look at the options there, it says allow create fields, but I can't figure out how to work. I'm guessing that's the ripper on the back. Um, but I can't figure out any way to actually get the ripper to work. Um, whether there's something I'm missing on it, I'm not quite sure. But, um, yeah, you've got three engine options for it. You've got standard, you've got uh, uh, souped up, I think, and beast mode. Um, the beast mode is brilliant. Um, so if we just take a look in here and we click on there, you've got, yeah, you've got basic, tuned, beast mode. That's your only options that you've got on this one. You don't have colours or anything like that. But I don't know what the Ripper is for. I'm, I'm assuming from the option that it would actually be a plow option. But it doesn't seem to work. Um, so that's a little unfortunate because I thought it would actually be pretty cool to try using this one to do a little bit of plowing. Um, however, we're not going to worry about it too much. If I can just back up here a bit. And there we go come in and start doing a little bit we'll just go back up over we we need to get the blade down on the other end and um we're 86 percent compacted we need to get the blade down here now it's, the problem is it does take a long time to slow down and stop um we're going to destroy our outhouse here if we're not careful there we go so it takes a little while to slow down and stop um but generally speaking it does do a fantastic job um, I have people suggesting all kinds of things um, as far in regards to um, what we should use for rolling this clamp um, some people said that they have actually seen the forager itself being used to roll the clamp um, obviously it's not going to be a continuous thing but they have seen a forager being put up on the clamp to assist with rolling it um, People have seen bulldozers being used to roll the clamps. Lots of people have seen excavators being used. Um, something that seems to be quite common, actually. So it's more common than I would have thought. It did surprise me just how many people said, oh, yeah, we've used an excavator to do that. Um, so it does appear that every, every machine that you can think of, just about, has been used to roll the silage clamp, including but not limited to bulldozers. So that's why we've got the bulldozer here today. I know that this one's probably a little bit bigger than just about anybody would ever normally use for a um, silage clamp, but there we go. Somebody did suggest, just going to take a look at that there a minute. I think that's a pretty good screenshot. I like that. Uh, but anyway, yes, uh, somebody, did, oh, I'll tell you what, let me um, move it down over. Someone suggested that I chop that tree down on the corner. Um, so that it makes it a lot easier to sort of see what's going on around the clamp. I'm inclined to agree with you. I think that tree is a little bit in the way. So let's just stop that one there a minute. Um, and we'll come through here. Yes, removing this tree, or at least cutting off some of the branches, would make life a lot easier for us. So I thought I would actually do that as well. I mean, you don't normally stop in the middle of a harvest to do something like this. Um, but... I figured that we could probably do do it this time. If I can come up here. Um, these branches here, that they're quite frustrating. So if we can if we can get rid of some of these branches, um, it might make life a little bit easier for when we're sort of trying to see what we're doing, that kind of thing. So I'm going to take a few of these off. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just sort of very quickly take these branches off this tree. Um, I'm, I'm going to cut, I'm going to remove the tree. Um, 
and clean them up a little bit so that it's all out of the way and then we can worry about moving the wood uh, later on. We're not going to worry about it now um, because today we're doing silage. Okay, I have cut down the tree. I've chopped it up in a little bit. There's a couple bits there that I can't move by hand. What I'm thinking is that come the winter we'll get one of those fireplaces that we had in Sosnyovka and we'll use one of those. I think that could actually fit quite nicely with this map. Um, you get a little bit of cash for it and it would sort of fit in quite well. So we'll run back up the road now and we'll get some more silage. Um, and then when we come back, uh, well, we'll do a few lo I think we'll try and stick in a few loads before we start running the bulldozer over it again. That bulldozer is highly efficient. It really does do the job really well. We're going to also have to think about whether or not we use the BGA this time round. Um, if we do, I think we will most likely use this bulldozer again because of the speed <laughs> which it can um, roll down and compact the stuff. I think, I think that's going to work out really, really well. Um... So we'll sort of we'll see how we'll play that by ear. We'll see how that goes because I don't know if we're going to um, look at the BGA this time round. Uh, do I want to go up here? No, I don't. Do I? That's not where I want to go at all. I want to go on to the next one. We can go up here if we do decide to buy field forty. We can go up there. Um, the only see I like seeing all these trees around, but the only annoying thing is that they really get in the way of your field of view, which is why I frequently go around and chop out a whole load of trees, especially ones that are near roads that you're using a lot. You, the time-lapse map, a lot of people, well, not a lot, some people said, you know, it was really sad to see all those trees go, um, you know, where I cut them down across the entire uh, hedgerow that's running alongside the road. The reason I did that was because they're so annoying um, blocking the field of view. It, it really does annoy me. Um, having that having that field of view blocked and having to rotate the camera around and be able to see where I'm going every time I go through. That's why I chopped them out and it's why I'm going to be chopping out a few more trees on the map in future. Um, not very many now. That, that um, hedgerow is kind of the principal one because we're up and down that road all the time. Going the other way, um, I'd have to take out trees on both sides and I just don't think it would be worth it. So I'm not going to do that. Someone suggested I should switch this machine off so that I'm not paying the hired help while I'm running back to the yard. Um, whilst I think that's kind of a good idea, the reason I'm choosing not to do that is because if you had a contractor, you'd be paying them, or if you were employing someone to drive a machine that you'd hired um, in order to do your silage, you would be paying them all the time, even if they were just sat in the field waiting for you to come back. And so for that reason, we're keeping the hired help on the whole time that we're doing the silage so that we can sort of simulate that um, it's an employee or even a contractor, whatever it might be, and they're being paid by the hour. So um, we'll continue to pay them by the hour. Um, we'll do, we'll finish this field today um, and then we can make the move down to the next field um, and then we'll work on that field in tomorrow's episode. I was wondering whether we should just do this, um, do two episodes, but I think that three episodes would be better. We'll sort of um, be able to do so, uh, take a look at sort of some of the longer distance stuff. And then we are going to start our combining. Um, whether or not we use the, uh, where we use the different ones. Most people sort of agreed with me where I said use the, um, the Massey Ferguson combine on the canola and then use the um, the class combine. I'm pretty sure I said dominator every time, but someone said it's not actually a dominator, it's something else. Uh, so let's just take a quick look. Um, we've got those, yeah, it's a class dominator 88. Uh, what did I, did I say dominator? I'm sure I said, do oh, you've got the class mega, that one over there. Now I can't remember which one that I was gonna be, I think that I was gonna be using the dominator. Uh, oh no, no, I was, I was looking at the class mega, I'm sure I was. Um, if we take a look through here, there's going to be two different ones. Uh, you've got that one there, the C420 for the Dominator. That's a 4.2 meter header, whereas that one is the 6 meters. Yeah, it is the class Mega. It's a Mega, not a Dominator. Two different combines. Um, so we'll be using the Mega and not the Dominator. The Dominator is a much smaller combine on this one, although the Dominator does actually have um, bigger versions. Um, I did have a very brief turn on a dominator that had I think it was a seven or eight meter header on it. I can't remember now. It, 
it wasn't particularly big. The the place that I worked where um, it's the only place I've ever worked where I actually drove a combine. I only did it the, the one summer. Um, uh, the previous summer I did just get a very brief spell on the combine and on this um, on this Dominator and they didn't run particularly big headers. It was a, it was a big estate or big for this country. It's about three and a half thousand acres, um, which for this country is quite a big place. Um, but yeah, they didn't um, have particularly big headers because they had some small fields and they had quite a lot of steep ground. So it worked out better having um, uh, smaller headers on the combine. It, it, it was just an easier way of doing things. Right, if I... I was hoping that he would sort of recognise me, but I don't think he's going to unless I'm blocking his um, route. It might have been that. Um... So yes, though that was the combine that I drove. But we're we're going to start harvesting in um, later in the week. Um, probably Wednesday's episode we'll start harvesting because we'll be doing a little bit more of the silage this turn round. Several people have said that they were a di bit disappointed that I've used this Rossel Nash again because I've used it previously and it's the smallest one. They didn't particularly like it. The reason I chose the Rossel Nash is because it's a much more common. Um, beast to be seen driving around in Eastern Europe um, and it was a cheap version as well so for a small farm it would definitely uh, fit in um, for our next silage uh, well not necessarily on this map um, but for some more silage in the future we'll take a look at using one of the bigger silage uh, one of the bigger foragers um, I'm thinking probably the crone one because we haven't done very much with the crone we used a we used a class Jaguar, um, we've used the Rossel Mash a couple of times. Um, I think we used a New Holland one, but I don't think we've actually used the Crone one in a Let's Play. We've used the Crone in Time Lapse, uh, I used one of the Crones in Time Lapse at least, um, but we haven't really used it very much in Let's Play. So next time round, we'll try to get a Crone going on, or we'll go and hunt around for a mod for something different, maybe a John Deere or something like that, I'm not quite sure yet. Um, yeah, it's it really does sort of depend on the map and sort of the feel of things, how we're doing it and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure. A lot of people, a lot of comments saying that they'd like to see me doing another sort of old times map. I did one in FS15 where I didn't use any machine. Or I tried to limit it to machines only manufactured before 1980. I'll probably move it forward a little bit to give us a bit more um, variation in the amount of stuff that we can use. Um, but I would, I think, I'm thinking of putting that up for one of the votes. I'm not going to definitely do it because some people would really like to see it, and other people, it really is not kind of the thing that would interest them. And we are kind of using old machinery on here, but it does give you a different style of gameplay if you strictly limit yourself to only using machines manufactured before a certain date and um, there was very very few exceptions that we actually made to that rule um, a couple of them where we couldn't find any models we did actually use um, sort of make an exception we couldn't find models but the newer models were kind of just updated versions of old machines that had already existed um, the one that was the most difficult had to have been the tree harvester I did manage to find a kind of version of a tree harvester that was manufactured, the, the actual original tree harvester I think was like 1978 or something, so it was um, it was a very old tree harvester and it was only just within the margin of our 1980 cutoff, but we did manage to find one so we did actually use it um, and that worked out quite well so for our next map I am thinking of one of the options being kind of an old times type um, map where we only use machines manufactured before a certain day, I'm thinking that will it'll either be 1990 or it'll be the year 2000 um probably 1990 uh, so anything um 80s 70s etc um we can use but obviously anything that is um 1990 or later we won't be able to use and i've got to put my beacon on then that wasn't very good but i don't think we actually need to use the beacon coming down here although some people did say that um you're supposed to have the lights on whenever you're on the road is that true for Poland? Do you have to have lights on all the time when you're on the road in a tractor in Poland? Some countries you do, some countries you don't. I'm not quite sure. Sure, somebody said about um, needing to have lights on. 
um, whilst on the road. I will put the beacon on this time round. At the moment, I'm following UK rules for beacons, which is you don't have to have it on all the time. You've only got to have it on on major roads. On the small back roads, you don't need to have a beacon running, which is why I'm always turning the beacon off when I'm on the smaller roads on the time lapse map. Um, because in the UK, you don't actually need to have them on the smaller roads, or at least in certain areas. Some places you do, it, it tends to get a little bit complicated because um, you have regional variations. But for the most part, um, if you're on a small road, you don't need a beacon. And if you're on a major road, you do need a beacon. Um, I'm not sure exactly what constitutes a major road. I think it's one where you have um, designated uh, lanes for two-way traffic. Whereas this road here, this is a minor road. It doesn't have designated lanes for two-way traffic. I mean neither does this one out here but this is a bigger road and it's busier so i would sort of say this is almost like a um, major road it's just not got the lines down it so we should have a beacon running on here have i got a beacon running oh no i haven't what have i done oh i know what i've done i've put the hazards on that's the one that i want i want the beacon on um and this one does have a beacon on the back of the trailer as well we're slowly running out of time um, we've got just enough time to run back to the field and get that last little bit of silage. So I'm going to do that. Then we're going to start moving down to the other field and we can wrap things up whilst we're doing our outside round on the next field. That is the end of these two fields. So we are now going to start moving down towards our last fields. Just make sure there's no traffic. It's a bit difficult dealing with traffic when you're using follow me so i've got the ford behind us running on follow me and we should just be able to trundle on down the road nice and easy so that we can get into the next field and uh, we can carry on from there so my question for this week is do you want me to do our grass fields we'll get one more cut out of them this year do you want me to do um do you want me to do hay and use that to feed our animals it'll only feed our animals for about half the winter maybe um and then we'll have to uh, buy in the rest of the hay that we use so we can sort of save a bit of money and try to be as self-sufficient as possible or would you rather i made silage bales sold the silage bales in the winter and used the money to pay for buying in all of the hay through the winter and have a little bit of extra money as well so do you want me to do silage bales or do you want me to do hay bales in our, gra in, on, in our grass field for the final cut that we'll get this year? It's your vote. It's your game. Head into the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. And yes, we are still having a few issues with people not being able to vote. It does look like, though, that um, even though it's not sort of it doesn't look like it's registering your vote, um, and it's it's sort of acting like you haven't voted it is actually registering your vote and it is doing it it's just taking a little while for it to sort of all come through properly so it does kind of look like it's working okay now then uh we'll unfold that one and then we'll go to here and we'll unfold that one like that i'll turn the beacon off come in here start this bad boy up and i'll press h and it should just go in there we go it's going to measure the field 1.2 hectares this is one of the biggest fields we've got and it's not a very big field at all is it um take the follow me off like that and we can start going around the field now this field is going to be a little bit tricky to get around the outside edge it's also going to be a little bit more interesting actually doing because of the large number of collision objects that are scattered around the field um, I think the next time round is going to be a bit more interesting because of that and how the um, the hired help, how it's going to sort of deal with running it and how um, I get round it all. We'll see. We'll 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 wait and see how it does because um, it's not course play. The AI helper, the AI vehicle extension. Um, but anyway, I will just carry on going round this field the first time and fill this trailer up. If you enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.